Hey guys, it's your international student guy here, and today I have a special guest, Adisha Wagmeyer. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, Adisha Wagmeyer. Yeah. yeah, cool. Um, we both graduated at East Central University, but I actually never um, met her while I was there. Yeah. Um, she's a, a community educator. I said that right? Yeah, cool. Community educator and resident life at the University of Oklahoma. And I thought she'd be the perfect person to discuss things that every campus should provide for you as an international student. Yeah, so I think that mainly when it comes to international students, things that are missing are resources for jobs, most importantly. And I think what I mean by that is when it comes to resources for jobs, usually the departments are really good at saying, oh, well, this is how you apply for your OPT, this is how you apply for your CPT. But then giving you opportunity on what to do with applying the CPT and OPT, like they're giving you all the documentation on the procedure and process and how to do these things, but they're not actually telling you the companies of which are going to provide you an opportunity to use your CPT or your OPT. Okay. So I think that's one important thing. And so then also, when you're coming in um, as a freshman, understanding your path as a freshman, um, some people come in and they're like, in their homes, their, um, or in their hometown, they're like, oh yeah, you know, being a social worker is great, but then if you're as an international student, come over here and you want to be a social worker, this is nothing against social workers, but if you come here and you want to be a social worker, for instance, that market is not a very good market for international students because the job market there does not support or, you know, sponsor the international students in that, you know, job route. So, so having, I guess, so having a international office that um, caters more to international student, um, or looks up resources for them that are really needed. You know, that says these are the career paths in which are going to assist you here in your time at in America. So this is the paths you should follow. I think that's helpful to a student who's coming from abroad. I definitely agree. Personally, for me, when I first came here, I didn't, I honestly had a naive perspective. I thought once I graduate, like, it would be relatively easy to find a job. And um, I did, I wasn't really aware of the process of getting sponsored or how difficult it was. I wasn't informed. Um, I, I went to events that told us information, but it was really vague, nothing specific or anything that's relevant to give me a precise idea of what to do right. after I graduate. So finding a university um, where the international office or the international officer is very helpful, um, that's great. I'll post a link below where um, you can look up the university and people actually write reviews, honest reviews about their experience at the university and their yeah. lectures. And you know what I can actually share with you? A university where I found where um, I think it's called Colorado Boulder. They're really good at looking for those companies and connecting them for international students who are using, wanting to do the OPT route or going on to H1B route. They have those resources and job pages available for you, ah, that's awesome. which I thought was great. And that recently I found out. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So, the next point is um, transportation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, transportation is big. You want to make sure that the university. If there isn't a public form of transportation, um, the university provides transportation for you to be able to, to go around town or to get around uh, campus if it's a relatively big university. Uh, for, for me, our university only, try, only provided a shuttle service twice a week, I think on Tuesdays and Thursdays at six o'clock, which was kind of inconvenient if you had class around that time. Um, for us, um, the, the shuttle service was inconsistent either, like sometimes, um, depending if they had a driver to actually provide the service, we wouldn't be able to go there. And so um, ensuring that the university has a scheduled shuttle service for you, I, I think it is very important. Yeah, it's funny you say that because when I was at ECU, we didn't have it and we were the ones who put the legislation in place to make it happen. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, then, and then you all got it. Um, so that's really good. Huh. And so they did make a change to huh, make sure that thanks. you had some route to well, Walmart. The problem was, was that they were like, well, there's no demand. Okay, but you have this whole population on campus that is always going to be in demand for transportation services yep. to Walmart, especially if they're living on campus. So whether you think there's a demand or not, you should cater for those students that are on your campus. Um, 
And I think it's important that students also feel that they have a voice, you know, because you're a part of the community on campus. Exactly. So if you find that there's an issue or if there's a problem, you should go speak out about it. And that's what we did and see it kind of worked. So oh, that's your awesome. generation of students who were there got to do that. I mean, we're not far apart either, like one year apart. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Quite that's cool. really cool. Um, but on transportation as well, if you're looking at universities that has really good transportation systems, let's say uh, like University of Oklahoma, they have really good bus routes and things like that, and it's free for students if you're with your student ID. If you come prepared and know where your routes are and what you're going to be doing and know which days or which Walmart you're going to be going to um, and know the services they provide with that, like they can carry your bike on the bus and things like that, if you know that ahead of time, it's really helpful because then you know you can get a bike from Walmart, carry it on the bus with you, come back and then you have a bike to go around campus with and in the winter you can ride the bus, you know. Yep. But then those campuses who don't have that, it's important that you're like on the day establish someone, maybe the international office has the first day they have like one services that first day you want to buy yourself a bike or something like that to get around campus because it's really important yeah. to so, have some. And, and then to get an idea to google your university and the uh, relative distance between university and nearby stores to understand if they're even in walking walking distance mm -hmm. um, the first time we walked to walmart that was not a good idea <laughs> not at all sure. so yeah, don't make that mistake so my next question to you adisha is as an international student why is it important to be active on campus? Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, so, there's, a re there's many reasons why. First, it's most important so that you can create a network of friends, um, so that you have those people, your go-to people, you know? Yeah. And um, then, college is, um, networking is important in college, especially after you graduate, you can tap into that network. Mm -hmm. If they travel to different universities, they could be a good reference. Yep. Or if they go to a company, you can get an internal referral, which is much more, um, it holds much more weight than you applying as an external um, applicant. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, so getting out there, making friends in all different places and trying to get involved from their perspective as well, understanding why, why were you involved and asking them, kind of getting from their you know point of view, why, what is this place about, what is this club about, and trying to understand, okay, well, this is what it's about, this from their perspective, from the online page, what it's about, and then go to one of the general board meetings in there, listen, and if it's something that interests you, then join, you know? But the most important part, I think, that where international students miss out is that they forget they're a part of the main student body, right? The, the body of the, the campus includes international students, and we forget that, and so we forget to sit on bodies like the SGA, which is the Student Government Association, and when we forget to do that, then there's no voice for us, so it's important that we make sure we have representatives there, and if we don't have one, you become that representative, or recruit someone. If you're not that person who's outspoken and you know someone who is, talk to them and be like, do you want to maybe do this, or we need someone out there, you want to help me find someone and so we get someone out there to like advocate for us because we need that one person there who we can always tap into and be like so these are the things that we're seeing occurring and these are the things we need to talk about um so that changes can happen for international students like you like jobs yeah. the bus yeah. <laughs> other things um mainly jobs though uh, when it comes to jobs employment on campus we see an increasing amount where it depends on the campus but some campuses will be like yeah we have an increased rate in uh, employment of international students but then we have some campuses who are like these are the jobs that will go to international students and everything else is like no it's just work study and when somebody says it's work study it does not apply to us and we are not allowed to, to work those jobs so understanding that and like tapping into that and making sure that you're advocating and saying that that's not fair we're coming all the way from here we're not allowed to work off campus so why not make opportunities better for us on campus so that we are able to work because everyone else on campus can work off campus that's right true. So trying to understand that and getting that due to the SGA board. Because once you explain, people are like, oh, okay, yeah, we didn't know that. And then they wouldn't help you too. So. All right, so closed mouths don't get fed. Mm -hmm. So allowing yourself to be vocal and letting those who are in power hear your voice makes a big difference. So the next point is employment. Uh, understanding if your university actually employs international students and knowing the difference between work study and regular employment yeah so can you elaborate yeah, so a bit on that work study means that those students who are either on financial aid or getting some sort of financial assistance and that allows them to tap into that they get like a certain amount of work study international students are not 
able to get any of that so therefore that's only for citizens so therefore that does not apply to you so when you hear a job that says work study it means that you cannot apply for that job that's only those jobs are only kept aside for people who have work study which means citizens right and then um international students we there there are some international loans and you're able to take those out and that can help you sometimes in employment if you're on a loan you are more liable to get a job but um it's not good to take out loans and if you want to take out loans it's really important that you discuss that with as many people as possible before doing so just as a side point but anyway um so that can also get you some employment but employment is <coughs> it's okay employment in general is understanding which groups on campus are you seeing international students and where are you seeing them so for instance if you look at the university of oklahoma where i'm currently working at you'll find international students working in front desk positions you'll see them working in the cafeteria you'll see them working um at uh, different uh, offices on campus in like front desk positions and things like that so in those roles you see that then you kind of present yourself to one of the international students there and you'll be like how did you get this job and try and like understand that and then that's how you get yourself into those roles um because it's a big university so when you're at a big university you need to make sure you know someone so you can get yourself in it's not just apply online and that's it you need to make sure you're making those connections If you're at a small university like the one we were at at East Central, I think in that sense it's important to go to the employment office and be like, you know, I want to work for facilities or I want to work here in the cafeteria. If you want to do this, I want to do that. And then making sure you're making those connections with those direct supervisors and saying that, hey, this is who I am. These are the skills I bring, and would it be um, okay if I could speak to you about the position a little bit more? And then try and get yourself in Gems. that way. Yeah. These are gems that she's giving. So honestly, uh, having an impression, um, talking to people at Mad that actually make a difference. That's where it really um, increases your chance of finding a job. Because you dropping off your resume to a front desk doesn't really ensure anything. Like, and if they have, if they didn't like you, they could literally just dump your resume away yeah, and never get there. anywhere. And But if you there. actually yeah, if you talk to the supervisor or the manager or the lead for that position, you're more likely to leave an impression to where they can get a feel for you and they or you already give a first impression so you will increase your chances even though um like your resume may not stand out as much as anyone else. The next important thing that you need to consider is campus safety and ensuring that there aren't any discrimination or hate crimes going on on campus, especially that may target your specific ethnicity group. So, yeah. um, and I think speaking to this as well, people of color, yeah. we probably experienced. I mean, I experienced it. Yeah. I don't know if you experienced it. I experienced more passive aggressive uh like prejudice like I was walking from my class to my dorm and this girl she saw me and she ran across the street because she felt threatened by me um and like I yeah I usually smile I I think I'm pretty interactive He's but one of like, the most friendliest people I've ever met so that's just stupid I mean honestly Okay one of the biggest things that really happened in East Central still on the wraps like I had to go to the student uh, affairs the vice president of student affairs I had to discuss it with him and at that time it was like something that happened between a whole group of international students and a group of um baseball students and some other students that decided to join in the what was going on and so I think understanding the climate on campus is really important as an international student and what your status means and how people perceive that so by saying by going around and being a proud international student i'm not saying you shouldn't be that way you should everyone should feel proud yeah. that they're from their country and you know hold their um just like everyone's patriotic you should be patriotic too right. but the the thing is that is you should be careful about how you say it around in crowds and who's around there who's listening kind yeah. of thing because it's um, easy for someone to interpret it wrong wrong and yeah. kind of taken in a threatening manner yeah. and i think in this case like what i'm explaining it was taken in a threatening manner and then you know words were shared this was shared it was a lot of things and it left up harming a lot of different people but a majority of people who got harmed were international students and we couldn't really get help from anyone because it was like our word against this whole 
prestigious baseball team that everyone was going to listen to. So understanding your place as well in the university, like you are as international students, not in the highest of places because you're in a new country, people are not really understanding you. And these are the facts that you have to face, you know, it's not like to say that there's anything wrong with international students, it's just that you have to, you have to face that when you're coming here as a new person yeah. and understanding your surrounding, your background, everything. And so when you're speaking to others, making sure that you're making that connection at first. And if someone doesn't seem okay with you, it's better to just walk away and be like, okay, well, nice nice talking to you and walk away and not get yourselves into those situations, um, even though it's probably not your fault. Yeah. So, and to add on that, you also want to consider university that's diverse mm -hmm. and is inclusive of wherever you're from, your origin, even if it's not specifically your country, at least um, your ethnic group. If you have other students that are from your region, it um, helps the in-state or the American students uh, uh, acclimate, is the word I'm looking for, acclimate to your accent and to your people. Whereas you're not going to be the first one, so it's not a constant reintroducing yourself to people and where you're from because they're not familiar with your accent. If there is, like, even if it's just 2% of the students are from where you are from, it helps in classes, um, it helps interact with other people. So, under, and then it also helps with you making friends and, and getting that home feel, you know, because you're going to miss home, you're going to be homesick a lot. And so it helps to have a group of people where you can relate to, not necessarily be with all the time, but it helps. But connect with like small things, yeah. like music or food or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. God, food, I miss food. <laughs> yeah, food. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so and I think just one other thing to add is just understanding that on different campuses, it's not always that we get to pick the campus that's the most diverse, you know, yeah. because due to the, the cost of education here. Yeah. You know, so for, for us, in, for instance, ECU happened to not be as expensive as maybe our other choices. And so I'm not saying that that's why I picked it, but if, if I had to pick something else, I mean, I got a good education with really not that much I was paying, yeah. you know, and it was it was decent, but it was in this really small town. And that small town was very close-minded and didn't really understand the population and we would be very paraded around the town. It would be like, international students, would you like to come to this church and talk about your country? International students, not like Adisha or Fendi, international students. Like We would refer to it this way, so we were very paraded around. Um, so understanding that, you know. And then next, one of the most important thing, which probably we should have talked first yeah it's like to ensure your university has like in-state waivers and scholarships uh, for international students so uh, can you explain what the uh, in-state waiver is yeah so if you currently live in any of the states in America Texas Oklahoma um, New York anything like that you currently reside there you're a resident you're gonna get an in-state waiver which means you're not going to pay this like large sum of say 10,000 per credit versus 6,000 per credit, something like that, um, because you're going to get waived. So some universities offer that waiver, that in-state tuition waiver, to international students. It's important to note which universities those are. Now, if you Google, sometimes you may be able to find them. Um, maybe Finney and I can be able to find them and post it for you all. Yeah, uh, I'll definitely share a link down below. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, these these are definitely universities you want to target and try and go there because that's going to be very beneficial to you um, according to, like, how much you'll have to, like, hash out in the end money-wise. And probably they also, in addition to this waiver, offer some sort of other monetary compensation in forms of scholarships or other things. But the waiver is not offered everywhere and it's really important to actually go, and, go in and look for that. And sometimes they won't really put it on the website, but... You can call in or you can either look in some of the Facebook groups in the universities, like for instance at OU, you can go to the ISA group and be like, do we have a tuition waiver? And they'll probably be like, no, because we don't have that here. But we do have that at other universities in Oklahoma. And if you go on their pages, they will share that view and say, yes, we do. And so understanding that, you know, how that works. Scholarships, um, I think, are really important when you join clubs, because some clubs offer scholarships like Retract. Right. Right. Yes. Um, that's a club that you really want to take advantage of. Not in the sense of that, but like scholarships wise, if you join and you're like really active member, 
you want to make sure you're looking at all the scholarships they offer and things like global citizenship I'm mean global citizen and the UN and things like that if you look at that for grad school even bachelors if you look at them sometimes they offer university scholarships and we just don't know about them because we're not really that informed but looking around and making sure that you're like oh this is for everyone it's not just for me it's not just for citizens you know things like that those are where you can find scholarships off your campus but within your campus Usually through your international link, you'll be able to find some scholarships. Um, sometimes also within clubs or groups. Yep. Um, I there's also department scholarships. So I wasn't aware of um, department scholarships until my senior semester when one of my colleagues applied and got it, and and it was too late for me to apply. And he was an international student as well. So don't be like me. Um, ask your professors and research your department to see if they offer scholarships and if they, if you are as an international student are eligible for them because um, I think they give a thousand dollars a semester, a thousand dollars every semester to the top two students who apply and my cumulative was higher than his so I probably would have gotten it because, but I didn't know and I didn't apply so I missed out on it. Mm -hmm. So don't be like me, research, ask and see even if it's not posted on, um, even if it's not posted on the website, email your department specifically and ask if they offer, um, because they could help. Yeah, and with that, uh, a lot of scholarships ask for sometimes like some sort of written essay or something oh, yeah. like that. So being prepared for that, you know, being like okay. Making sure you have some time, like don't wait for the last minute, making sure you have like a week or something to really think it through and write it so that you uh, impress the committee and write something, you know, really thoughtful about, you know, your either your circumstance or just generally, you know, about your experience at the university, whatever it is. Make sure it's really thoughtful, don't just like, you know, throw something together and hope that you're going to get something. Yeah, um, that's it guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button, ring that bell. <laughs> Um, that way you'll be notified of all of the latest uh, uploads and my ongoing activities. Um, give a round of applause to Adisha for being a great guest. And thanks, guys.